Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back once again to On the Town with Shoes and Doug. And uh, she sees Shoes there with different glasses tonight. Yes. I know the people out there are probably wondering what happened to the other glasses. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. they both look nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's, the, it's the mystery of the missing glasses. Missing yeah. Glasses. I, it's so like the a... alternate glasses tonight are very nice. Thank you. Maybe Thank we should you. do a thing where people don't know what pair of glasses you're going to wear each week. Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I, I have some new, I have some new ones uh, tonight. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we're going to do something uh, in our entertainment uh, topic, but uh, kind of a tribute show tonight to uh, two television people that uh, you and I kind of grew up watching on different shows. Uh, one was a uh, host of one of the great game shows of all time, uh, Hollywood Squares. Peter Marshall. He passed yeah. away uh, recently, as we record this. Uh, but pretty good run, 98 years old, and uh, Phil Donahue, great talk show host, kind of revolutionized the talk show format. He passed away not too long ago uh, at 88. So uh, I guess we'll start, want to start with Peter Marshall? Yes, yes. You just watched uh, Hollywood Squares growing up, right? I did, and uh, he was always, what I liked about Peter Marshall, he had like a real friendly, you know, just kind of an enthusiastic friendly manner, friendly way about him. So you didn't feel, you know, even if you were a contestant on the show, I would say you would feel pretty relaxed, you know, because he seemed like a really nice guy that, you know, he didn't seem like an intimidating no, person. No, not at all. No, he was... uh, yeah, and funny. And it seemed like a show that you would have fun. Yeah. He was a talented man. I had a chance. Uh, I think you've heard the interviews we've done with him a couple of times on radio in Sarasota. Uh, came on twice with us. Uh, once he wrote a book about the Hollywood Squares. Another time, he, yeah. a lot of people don't know he was a singer. He put out a CD of, kind of Sinatra type music. Uh, wow. So a very good singer. And we had him on twice. Really nice guy. And uh, so he was a singer. He was an actor. He was a part of a comedy team. Wow. So, uh, this was all stuff he did before he even got the, the game show. He he took that as kind of a lark, he said. He, he really had no plans to be a, in a game show. But what? I guess he went for an audition, they offered it to him, and he said, okay, he thought it would last 13 weeks, and it lasted, what, 16 years or something. Wow, <laughs> that's incredible. Um, yeah, I often wondered when the Hollywood Squares, when it began, what year? It was like 66, 67, something like that. I remember as a little kid watching it. You know, my parents would watch it, and it was on early enough at night where we were allowed to stay up and you know watch it. To watch I it, yeah. Watching it early on, and then it was uh, it was on at night, and then it was also on during the daytime. Yeah, the Hollywood script. Yeah, and it was really, um, I thought it was, yeah, it, and it was fun because I liked how it was a tic-tac-toe. Yeah. Uh, Work. No simpler game than that. It was just tic-tac-toe. That's all it yeah. was. <laughs> and it was real cool. And so uh, uh, the contestants, it seemed like what you would do is pick the celebrity, you know, which way if you wanted to win, you know, horizontal. You yeah, the women with the O's and the men were usually the X. Well, it was always the women with the O contestants, the men with the X contestants. Yeah. And, uh, he had just played tic-tac-toe. And, of course, Paul Lind. He wasn't the original center square. I, I didn't realize that until you look at some of the old videos. I think oh. Buddy Hackett was. And then oh, Paul Lynn didn't become the center square until a couple of years in. And then, of course, he became famous for just that, pretty much. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, because I, I often wondered with him, too, Paul Lynn, was he like, did he do stand-up comedy? or? He was sort of a comedian actor. He was on, like, variety shows, and you'd see him show up. Oh, he used to show up on, what, uh, Bewitched? He was Uncle Arthur, remember? Yeah. And he'd show yeah. up at Munsters. He was, like, the doctor. And, you know, once in a while. He was so he did fun. that, but, but it was all Paul Lynn. You know, the Paul Lynn character was the same, whatever he did. <laughs> kind of the voice. It was kind of funny. Yeah, kind of it was like... Funny. Yeah. But I think that format, the Hollywood Squares, was the best for him because Peter, Peter Marshall even said Paul Lynn was good in small doses. You wouldn't want to see him every week like no. doing a, a show, you know, just him or yeah. star because yeah. it, it wouldn't work. And it didn't. Yeah. He had a couple of sitcoms that didn't work. Had to be a little bit of a time, you know. So. Yeah, he was like, like some people are like that. Yeah. And he was... Yeah. Uh, Kind of like one. Charles Nelson Riley, remember from the Match Game? You know, they were similar kind of characters. You know, they were theater people. They did other stuff, but 
Yeah. The game shows was kind of where they made their name. And talk shows. Although yeah. Paul didn't do many talk shows. Charles Nelson Roddy did. But uh, but little okay. little you know, little appearances here and there on TV. Yeah, it's really you know and it's uh it's so funny. Yeah, it's interesting. Um how that, yeah, because I, I often wondered, like, with Charles, you know, I remember him from Match Game. Match Game, yeah. Charles Nelson Riley, and uh, so he <laughs> was a theater guy. Okay, he exactly. He a lot of theater, and he did uh, The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. Remember that show? Oh, wow. That might have been before even your time. I remember the little kid that was on. He was on okay. that. Okay, he had a pipe. And he'd show up as a guest on a Tonight Show. He was a good talk show guest. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did a lot of Broadway, yeah. Okay, so he wasn't really like a TV actor as much. Other so than just showing up as a guest on the, you know, the game show and that, but he's more of a theater actor. Yeah. Theater actor, wow. Yeah, he, I remember he had a pipe. and uh, he had a pipe and he had the bad toupee because he was bald, but he had a bad toupee. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it was You know, it was a joke. You know, he, everybody knew he was bald. You know, he and he had these big glasses. Big glasses, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. I yeah, I remember that, and I remember uh, Paul Lind. You know, he would yeah, kind of that snarky way of talking, but it was funny. It was in funny. short, you know, short periods, but you wouldn't want yeah. every week to have you know that. It wouldn't, have, and it didn't. You know, too much. No, no, you you wouldn't want. Uh, no, he he was uh, yeah, he was funny. I you know I would say, and I I liked. It seems like I used to see on Hollywood squares like Phyllis Diller. Somehow. Yeah, just about everybody was on there. The, the the regulars were like Charlie Weaver, who was like the old guy in the corner. Then yep. when he died, George Goble. Oh, wow. Uh, who else? Rose Marie. Remember Rose Marie from the Dick oh, Van Dyke yeah. show? She was a regular for a long time on the Hollywood Squares. Oh, oh, my gosh, I remember. Usually had like four or five regulars that you'd see most every week or every. And then they'd have guests from different shows pop in. Yeah. You know. yeah. Oh. Oh my gosh! It's, and the question for people that may not have seen the original, you saw the ones after that, the later versions, they were terrible. <laughs> Hollywood swears. The original, you know, Peter Marshall would ask a question, kind of a setup or a joke, and then the celebrity would give like a little punchline before was, they give was, the answer. It was funny. Yeah. Yeah, he was really good. Uh, he was he was really good as the uh, commentator. Yeah, I mean, I really. Enjoyed him. He was a straight man, and like I said, in a comedy team. So he had experience being, uh, you know, doing comedy. So he was really good at setting it up. You know. Yeah, he was like a funny guy. Uh, and I, I remember I used to like the guy that did Gambit. I remember oh, the Yeah, yeah, was, nice guy. Yeah, we had him on a few times radio too. Really nice. He yeah. seemed like he a really. 90. He's ninety years old. And he's yeah. still. I'm glad that he's still. He was still doing really okay, good. apparently. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, Peter! Yeah, Peter. Uh, Wink Martindale. Um, I always wondered the wink, like how it's some kind of. A yeah, I know he told the story, and I forget now. It's something to do with his initials, or I think that they called him Wink. It's like William something. Okay, okay. The middle Martindale. initial, middle well, name might begin with a C, something like that, and they put them together and became Wink. I think that's it. But uh, oh my gosh, yeah, uh, it's interesting. It's not like his name was Winkle or something. It's you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> William something, I think. William something. It, it's it's really he was really good. Yeah, he was another. He had a coach. bunch of shows. I think he might have had next to Bill Cullen. He said he has the second most game shows that he hosted. Yeah, he was really good. I liked um, Tic Tac Toe. He did. Uh, uh, what else did he do? Gambit. You said was that was one. That High was Rollers. Good. I think he did. He did a whole bunch of them. Wow, I liked. Um, somehow I remember Gambit was almost like a like a almost like He's a twenty one. It's 21, yeah. yeah. And you but they could call it that, you know, it was gambling, so they called it Gambit. Yeah. yeah. But basically, yeah. Blackjack. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of fun. <laughs> it, you know, I liked the, uh, it was It was fun. I remember in the mornings, it used to be on. That like, was a daytime a, show, right? Yeah, in the yeah, That's the thing about the Hollywood Squares. It was on every day in the daytime, yeah. but I think once or twice a week, it was on at night. At night, which yeah. was unusual for a game show back then, you know. Yeah, and you know, it was almost like, and the Price is Right used to be on at night. Um, they did it a half-hour version at night, right? Yeah. Yeah. Be, and I, uh, and Dennis James did it, and Bill Cullen did it. Yeah, right? I mean, they were okay, but I love. Yeah, Bob Barker was. And then Bob Barker became the. I think he did. He was I, think, really I don't think he did the night show, but it was, they just did the daytime show after that. But uh, He was yeah. really good. Yeah, Bob Barker. <laughs> Bob. Um, yeah, we'll do a show on Bob sometime. Yeah, yeah, because he, he, 
He made that show. Yeah, it was. He, just, it, uh, he made almost to 100, oh, Bob. You know, Peter Marshall, 98. Bob, about 99. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's really good. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I, uh, in pretty good shape until almost the end. He said, you know, he's still playing tennis and, you know, he's still performing. So, pretty good run. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess after that show went off in, what, early 80s? He just he did singing and theater and things, so he kept busy. Yeah, and definitely. Uh, he always got the feeling, like he even said, you know, people just know me from Hollywood Squares. They don't know me from, like, you know, I'm a singer. I can do other things. But he didn't complain, but he said, you know, people don't realize I did other things. So he was a really good, so, uh, Doug, did, yeah. did yeah. you hear him sing? Have you heard Oh, some? well, we got the CD when we did the interview with him. Wow. And we, the, uh, we, you know, we did the. Yeah. Second, show we used to do over at uh, SRQ. And, wow. Yeah, so, good. Right? Sinatra type kind of song. Wow. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Wow. I would have never thought, that's a, that is so interesting. Yeah, I would have never thought he was, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, for, uh, one time I heard that uh, Peter Marshall was really good friends with Larry Hagman. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Now, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, it was really weird. Yeah, he was. Um, I never. I don't remember Larry Hagman ever going on Hollywood Squares though. Yeah, it was. Really Genie weird. or anything, you know. Where, yeah. Was Was Peter Marshall from Texas? Yeah, I think he was from West Virginia or something. But he came to New York as a kid. You know, pretty young guy. I think he pretty uh, much yeah, went to high school in New York. You know. Yeah. It's interesting. It, yeah, because I don't know how those two. Um, but yeah, I'm sure they might have known each other. It's possible. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah, they somehow were uh, good friends. I'm going to have to look that up. Again. That's one thing, Larry Hagman. You never saw him very rarely on talk shows, very rarely uh, on any other show, you know. I've I, seen a couple of interviews with him recently on YouTube that he did, but he didn't wow. do a lot of them, you know. Yeah. No, no, I, I remember. feel like later before he passed, you know, like a history of him, you know, when he was in his 70s. But he didn't do too many when he was working. No, uh, I don't remember like when Dallas was on. Um, funny, maybe a little short thing once in a while on Entertainment Tonight. They they show that, but nothing. I don't know why he never went on the Tonight Show. No, oh. he he never did, did he? I don't remember. I think so. No, I don't remember it. You know, oh. I don't remember him on. The, you're absolutely right. I wonder, yeah, if Linda Gray went on the. That's too many. Well, the CBS show, maybe that's the reason. But you didn't see too many Dallas people. But they didn't really need to. They were already popular. I guess, you know, you didn't have to do it. But Patrick did. Duffy did. Duffy did go on there, though. I did see him. He actually hosted once or twice. before oh they gosh. Before Joan Rivers, they had a permanent host. He did host a couple of times. Oh, my God. Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, yeah, that's that's really. Yeah, he was good. Um, Patrick yeah. Duffy. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 absolutely true, though. But. Yeah, with Larry Hagman, it was like very few. Yeah, didn't see him. Um, I, I think there was like on Family Feud. I think they had some of them from the. Did Dallas. they have Dallas go on there? The the did, was Larry Hagman on that one? I think he. I think it was. Uh, sorry about this. I think it was Linda Gray and Larry Hagman, and I think Charlene Tilton. Charlene Tilton, probably. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, the it's guy probably on, who, on YouTube. You have to yeah, look that up. Steve yeah. Now. Yeah. I think he was on there too, and um, it was interesting. And I saw the cast of Gilligan's Island. Yeah, I've seen that one. Gilligan's Island, the Lost in the Space. Was on there, and that was. Uh, uh, I think yeah, uh, the Monsters, a bunch of them. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, oh, we're gonna we're gonna bring our little friend up because he's barking. I am. Uh, or ask who is that little uh, friend? I want to see Ty again. I um. Hi, <laughs> here he is. I'm, I apologize. Parents uh, on our other, a couple other our videos. Little, here's fine. our, and everyone, here's our little guy here. <laughs> Can you there see him? He he's his head. Yes, and he's moving around. He's on my lap now. He's a sweetheart. Yeah, he's uh, my little buddy here. See there we go. Oh, he's had his head down. <laughs> now he's... Uh, He's, he's, uh, I think, he's I think Ty liked Hollywood Squares too, didn't he? <laughs> I think he did, yes. He would be he like, he television. Uh, he did. He likes he, um, he gets on the couch and uh, he likes watching television with us. He does. He loves to cuddle. <laughs> he's a cuddler. Uh, he liked Charlie's Angels. That was, I, was, I don't blame him for that. I, yes, I was, I was watching, uh, an interesting one with Cheryl Ladd in it and, uh, she goes to Las Vegas. 
uh, in this one, and uh, it was a guy who was doing counterfeit gambling or something. And oh yeah, that's the one yeah. I think they introduced the guy that played uh, on the Vegas show, Dan Tana. Yeah, we've been watching that on DVD. Yeah, I that was they had some really good. Yeah. I t that was a good show too. Yeah, yeah. well, you and know, I have to watch that one. She had Absolutely. the DVDs of it, but uh, we'll Absolutely. switch over now, and we want to remember Peter Marshall. So God bless you, Peter Marshall. God bless but, you. But uh, another guy that uh, I would watch not every day. But yeah. he kind of was fun to watch in the afternoons, at least in New York. He was on, I think, 4 o'clock, that yeah. I remember. Uh, yeah. Phil Donahue. Yes, he was good. I liked Phil. Yeah, and, and you know, with Phil Donahue, it seemed like, you know, because I remember watching uh, the show. Now, in uh, Cherry Hill, yeah. I remember I lived there. It used to be on in the morning. It was on different times. Uh, yeah. Uh, different About places. Nine. Yeah, yeah, like 9 a.m. or like it was in the morning, like 9.30, 10 to Phil Donahue. Show. Right. And um, he was good. He was he, he was, was the a first good guy. guy. Maybe he wasn't the first to do that format. Maybe yeah. some people did it locally, but he's the first guy to kind of have the microphone, walk around the audience, do the, you know, the yeah. audience questions. Not really just sit down at a table or a desk and do the traditional panel yeah. He was the first to do that. I, I like how he did And he did that. it really well. You know, the, this was before yeah. talk shows became completely garbage. You know, he had some weird topics once in a while, but uh, but you got the feeling it was, you know, he cared yeah. about the topics. It wasn't like just for ratings. No, no. And I, and I like how with the audience participation like that, um, it made it seem much more real. You know, it yeah. was like, uh, just listening to some humdrum thing. It was really good how, you know, he got the audience involved. And he was known for running around the studio and uh, with the microphone, and, you know, the people could ask questions. Uh, he never sat down, rarely sat down. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the first 20 minutes they would do a little bit more one on one, whatever the guest was. And usually yeah. it was just one guest at a time, maybe two, but one yeah. topic. And, he was uh, really I remember that first segment would always be like 20, 25 minutes, no commercials. No. no and then was... they take commercial, then be like, you know, cut up in the second half, but then they do the audience question. But it's really good. It was I, really... I, liked, I liked his format. You know, I, I, I. Then everybody agree. stole it after that and they ruined it. <laughs> yeah. And I, and no, and I'm with you. And it, it's a shame that that happened because uh, uh, it was, re it's really good because, you know, People look forward to seeing, you know, they look forward to seeing Phil talking, but they also, you know, you also look forward to seeing what, the, hearing what the audience right. had to say for the different answers. And sometimes they had And he would let the guests talk. I mean, he, he was a left, a liberal guy. I wouldn't say left wing, but a liberal guy. So, you know, he was kind of on the left, but not crazy left. But he let the he let the people that maybe he didn't agree with he let them talk he didn't interrupt them or it wasn't sleazy like you know Geraldo and some of those other shows yeah, I didn't, you know I didn't, yeah yeah with sleazy Geraldo. and uh, argumentative it never got to that level you know no, it was conversation no. no I really I I liked it because yeah it it wasn't like uh, nothing sleazy um, it was just very yeah, maybe like, a little suggestive at times but never. Never uh, cringy, at no. least the ones I watched, you know. No, yeah. no, and it was kind of like cute too because you always knew it was Phil Donahue, you know, the hair. Even kind of looked like a doctor, didn't he? Like you, like your doctor almost. You know, the white hair and uh, the glasses, you know. <laughs> yeah, even as a young guy, he had yeah. that. Yes, his hair just went white. I guess he was. Yeah, you look at old clips. He always had. Seemed like he had always had the graying white hair. Yeah. yeah. I I don't know if he just. Some people I know go gray. Yeah, maybe in their twenties. I think in his twenties he might have. Yeah. yeah, started going, uh, started going gray, and and uh, but he really was. Um, yeah, it was it was really good. It was. Uh, I don't know if he had been a journalist or. Yeah, I was just reading about him since he passed. I didn't know his real early career, but they said he worked in local TV. I think he did like TV reporting, maybe a little anchoring, and, but he didn't wow. like that. Somehow he got on a local public affairs show and created this kind of format. And it was in Dayton, Ohio. He started oh, it. And okay. then he got it to Chicago where it became syndicated and then eventually New York. So. Wow. Well, yeah. he did. And then. Uh, he I think it was on 20, 25 years, something like that. 26 wow. years. Maybe, maybe 20, 29 years, I think, altogether. So that's a pretty good run.
Yeah. It's really good. And was was he married to Marlo Thomas? Yeah, he actually met her on the show. She was a guest. That's what I was wondering. Uh, he just, yeah. I guess, I guess he was either in the process of getting divorced or he just got divorced. And she oh. came on as a guest to promote something, and then apparently they just hit it off. I think she said he asked her out right after the show. I guess she couldn't meet him then, but then like a month later they went to dinner, and then. He was living in New York, and then uh, she was living in California, so they flew back and forth a lot, and then they eventually got married. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a nice story. That's a great story. She, I she said that. she was never going to get married. She always said, oh, I'm not going to get married. She didn't want to, but wow. uh, she eventually said, because she had like five kids. They oh, were wow. still like teenagers then, so she had to be kind of like a stepmom, you know. But, oh, uh, my gosh. Wow. Uh, now, now, so she had never been married. She'd never been married. She said, I just heard interviews with her. She said, I really wasn't planning on getting married. But uh, but they, apparently, if you watch the clip of her and him on the show, you can kind of almost see it looking back now. There was like, you know, flirt, flirtation going on, you know. Oh, he really like, well, she was that girl. I mean, who didn't like Marla Thomas? Yes. You, uh, <laughs> You're a guy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, that is so, I, I love that, though, where you were. She was still looked pretty good then. I mean, she was. Yeah, she wasn't that old. Yeah, her, was her forties then? Yeah, she was like wow. forty-four when they got married. Oh so, my gosh! Yeah. Wow, so, yeah. that yeah. that is so cute. Uh, so they were I, married forty-three years, I guess. Something wow. like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I I um I love it. I Apparently, think he had been ill recently. I, you know, sometimes you don't know he's here, so I don't know. He said he had some illness. Don't know what he had, but uh, you didn't hear much about him the last twenty years. You know. He, Kind of retired from TV, made a brief comeback on a local cable. I think on CNBC didn't work, and then never heard from him again. You know. Wow. But he made all the money he needed, so he didn't have to work. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, I I thought that show, you know, that format worked, and I thought he did a classy job, even with topics that were a little, you know, crazy. Absolutely. But he never went off the rails like you know, Sally Jesse Raphael and all those other um, weird ones. I I. Um... You know, it was always. There was a point to it, at least. Even though, yeah, I know they want to get ratings, yeah. but there was a point to it. He never really went crazy. No, no, and and he wasn't. Yeah, what? Well, like sometimes it's really true because I remember the Sally Jesse rap. Yeah, and the weirdest thing, she had kind of the look too, like the red glasses. Her deal was the red glasses and the and the hair. Yeah. The hair and <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so funny how they all had. Yeah, a lot of them seemed to have like a look or something. Yeah. And, oh. Uh, it was, she, um, was a, she was a radio. I used to listen to her on the radio in New York. Oh, she had like, oh. a local show and then a syndicate, like an advice show, you know, general talk. Okay. It was good. You know, it wasn't okay. tremendous see? radio, but, but then yeah. she got a talk show and then she kept saying, she said, well, they wanted me to do all this stuff that was crazy. Well, so that's why she did it. But, uh, oh, wow. Yeah. She was like I, a pretty, you know, down the middle radio. It wasn't like she was a crazy, you know, yeah. She seemed like an intelligent, yeah, it was like an advice show she had on radio, you know. And yeah. and it just so that's interesting. And then she got the TV. Got it. Um, yeah, did legitimate topics, and then of course she said, "Well, to do ratings." Then they said, "Well, you got to do this." And then, well, she did it, but you know. Yeah. You know. So like, she was one of many that, uh, and they got worse after that. You know. They, I don't know they, what it's like now. I don't know who. What? She, well, they got all those like the to the View, the Talk, all those crummy shows now. So I don't. I don't they watch. used to be good. Yeah, uh, my mom used to really enjoy Phil Donahue because it was almost like a normal talk show. You, you know, it wasn't like that other guy, Jerry Springer. Springer, was, yeah, right, who uh, we knew in Sarasota. I used to see him around yeah. town once in a while. <laughs> so, and and uh, I, you God know, bless Jerry. I know he left us about a couple of years ago, but uh, that was a terrible show, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, I, I really... Uh, I, I, he did I, it. He said, I know I did this crazy show, but he did it for the money. So he said, yeah, I, I didn't understand it really. Yeah. It was just like people fighting. He was a bright guy. He was a, he a law degree, you know? He oh, wow. So he was a lawyer. Guy. He was a legitimate news anchor in Cincinnati. And he oh, did wow. that for a while. But yeah. again, he got the crazy show and then, you know, what do you got <laughs> Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, because I wondered about that. Like, uh, I did not know he had a law degree. Yeah, he was real pretty bright. Oh. Um, 
I, I apologize. I yeah, that's okay. You can pick them up. We'll wrap it up here in a, in a minute or so. But we just wanted to kind of pay tribute to uh, two TV people that we grew up watching, and Peter Marshall, Phil Donahue, and uh, 88 for Phil, so not a bad run. No, but no, uh, no. God bless uh, Marlo Thomas. Uh, you know, they were married a long time. So uh, we had her on once, too. I like, you know, who doesn't like Marlo Thomas? I liked her. I love that yeah. show, that girl. That was a great show. It was really, it was fun. And, uh, you know, I loved that. And that was cute with the song, the music. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have to do a, a video on that, too. Yeah, we'll, that was a good one. That was, yeah. I liked it. You and I both, I mean, that's a show both, you know, guys or young, you know, boys would watch it. And yeah. girls would watch it because they both liked, uh, you know, the girls were like Donald, I guess. And then they liked yeah. the outfits that uh, Anne Marie yeah. wore, right? Then they liked the outfits. Absolutely, yeah, and it guys was just, like you know, our guys were like Anne Marie because she was cute, <laughs> very cute, and and it was just. And then you could look at Donald Hollinger and say he's a cool guy. You kind of wish you were Donald Donald Hollinger if you were a guy, you know. <laughs> uh, it, it was just you know, and it, it was just, and it was a fun, um, yeah, it was just a fun. You just like to watch it. It was yeah. fun. It was uh, cute, and uh, she was adore. Yeah, Marla Thomas really. It really was. Yeah, it was, it was very pr really pretty lady. Yeah, it was just uh, a little likable. Very likable. Funny. And fun. Yeah. yeah, a lot of fun. Danny Thomas's daughter, for people that aren't aware. You know, very Danny Thomas. Yeah, he's a nice man. Uh, and yeah, and I always think of that hospital, the. Uh, St. Jude. Yeah. I think she's still part of that. I think she's still a fundraiser, you know, goes, does. You know things for that. So yeah, that was that was the biggest thing that Danny Tom. I mean, he said that was the best thing he ever did. Just that's fantastic. You know, start oh. that. So, but anyway, we will wrap it up there. So, uh, God bless Peter Marshall. God bless Phil Donahue. Good God life, bless. well lived, right? Did pretty well. Absolutely. Uh, and that's life up for uh, this edition. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs>